So you've created a Python game and now you're wondering if you can train your character with reinforcement learning. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. No reinforcement learning experience necessary. I'll start with the high level explanation using, you guessed it, the game Snake. Then we'll jump into the code. Okay, so I have an image of the snake game on the right for reference. On the left side, this is the reinforcement learning paradigm. So we need to fit the game into this paradigm in order to be able to train it with reinforcement learning. You can think of the agent as the snake's brain, but more accurately, this is gonna be the AI model that's gonna be controlling the snake, the snake's head. Now the agent is going to take an action and the action is already defined by your game. In this case, the snake can take one of these four actions. Of course, if it's heading toward this side, trying to do a action to go backwards doesn't do anything, but we don't need to worry too much about that. That action just won't do anything and the AI should figure that out by itself. The environment is basically your game. Observation is what information you want to pass back to the snake. Or you can think of it as what does the snake see after taking that action. Now I'm not the first person to be training snake, so I'm going to use an observation that someone else has already done. And it looks something like this. First we want to know if the snake is in danger of dying. So we want to know what's right next to it and what's right in front of it. We know if there's an obstruction in any one of those, we don't want to take that action. We'll call this observation danger. The spot that's right in front of the snake, we'll call that straight ahead. And relative to the position of the snake, this one would be to the left of the snake. This is to the right of the snake. We can use one and zero to represent if there's an obstruction or not. So in this case, there is no danger. So we can put zeros in all three of those spots. And of course, you might guess that we are forming an array or a vector. The next thing that we want to observe is what direction the snake is heading towards. So the second set is direction. Let me write them down here. It's uh, up, right. Again, we can encode this with zero and one. And at any one point in time, only one of these should be true. Now we can assume that the snake is going to the left. We'll mark the other ones zero and it's going to the left. Now the last piece of information that we want to give to the snake is where is the food, this one, in relation to the snake. So we have food relative location the food can be either above or below the snake's head. I'm using up and down. In this case, it is below the snake's head. Put a zero here. It is below the snake's head. And then we can have, is it to the left of the snake's head or to the right of the snake head? And it is to the left. Now we have this as a vector that we can use as an observation to send back to the agent. Now at this point, you might be wondering how would you know how to construct this observation or what to use as an observation. So let's take a step back. Remember this is feedback to the agent. What do you think the snake should know in order to be able to find food? Probably if it's gonna run into walls, probably you need to know which way it's going and where the food is. You don't have to encode the stuff like this with ones and zeros, but the AI model, we are talking about training a neural network. So ones and zeros make it easy, but you can aggregate this into zero, one, two, and three, one number to represent this. And then instead of this piece, you can add one, two, three, four, and then instead of this piece, you can put the exact X, Y coordinate of where the food is. Or you can add the location, also the X, Y coordinate of where the head is. So you do have the flexibility of designing the observation. You might have to do some trial and error to see which ones are most effective. If you find that the agent is not learning, it might be that your observation is insufficient. 
or it could be the reward. The second piece of information to send back to the agent is the reward. For the reward, let's say game over. We're gonna do, we're gonna give the snake a penalty of minus 10. 10 is totally arbitrary. You can do minus 100. If the snake is able to pick up a piece of food, we can do a reward of plus 10. Similar to observation, reward is also something that you might need to play around with in order to make the training work. If you think of this from the point of view of training a dog, this is uh, very similar. The agent would be your dog or the dog's brain. The dog takes an action such as peeing inside a house. The environment, let's say inside house or backyard. The observation is pee inside house and the reward is dog gets punished. So with that feedback, the dog hopefully learns a little bit and won't do it next time. Now that we have mapped the snake game into a reinforcement learning problem, let's talk about what this means for your game. What do you have to actually change? For now, let's assume that the agent is provided for us. We need to hook up the agent with the environment or the game. At first, the agent doesn't know anything, so it's going to generate a random action. The environment takes that action and gathers the information to formulate the observation and also determine the reward and send both of those pieces of information back to the agent. The agent does some training and then generates another action. So this cycle keeps repeating. Over time, the agent picks better and better actions and eventually learn to master this game. For the agent, we can actually use a library called Stable Baselines 3 or SB3 for short. SB3 has the reinforcement learning algorithms implemented on top of a neural network. So we don't have to worry about the agent piece. We just need to modify the game to handle the actions and return the reward and observation. There is a Python framework called Gymnasium that implements this reinforcement learning pattern. As long as we modify the game to be compatible with the Gymnasium interface, we can plug it into Stable Baselines 3 and perform this training. Next, we'll jump into the code and see how to make this happen. By now, you may realize why it's very difficult or impossible to train a published game like Halo. For one thing, the game is too complicated. And of course, the other is how can you modify the game to take into action and gather the observation and reward. But I do want to mention that people have modified and trained games like StarCraft. If you go to my GitHub page, you'll find this project. I have the README open and it's going to guide you on how to set up this project. The files that I have in here, this is the snake game itself. This would be your game and I'm not going to go over how your game works. I'm just going to go over what the reinforcement learning changes are. This is the Gymnasium interface. If we can make the game compatible with the Gymnasium interface, then we can plug it into Stable Baselines 3 and have the Stable Baselines 3 library train the game. My project requirements are inside the TAMO file here. Once you grab the project from GitHub, I'm using the UV Python environment manager, initialize your environment, call the sync function. This is gonna install everything that's specified in the TAMO file. And then you should be good to go. To play the game manually, let's try this command. Okay, so this is me controlling the snake. All right. Here's the controls. And now how to train the game. Let me show you training with rendering on. Let's see what happens. Now training is actually happening right now. As I mentioned before, the snake is gonna take random actions. So you see that most of the time at the beginning, it's not gonna find the food but eventually it will and it's gonna get better and better. But when we do actual training, we don't want rendering on because this is extremely slow. 
So that's one thing you need to modify in your game is to be able to turn off rendering. I'm going to run this command. It's going to use the PPO reinforcement learning algorithm and it's going to train for 100,000 steps or actions before it stops. You can also specify how many steps you want to train it. Of course, the longer you train it, the better it gets. Now training is happening in the background. Let me expand my terminal. There's going to be logs being written here. Let me quickly show you how to interpret this log. This is episode length average. Each game, how long did the snake survive? What you're looking for is that in each iteration of the log, the number should be increasing, and it is. That means the snake is able to stay alive longer and longer. The second thing you want to look for is the episode reward mean, the average rewards. Right now, it seems like the snake is dying more often than, than it's finding the food. And that's why we have the negative reward here. As we go down, we should expect the reward to go up the snake should be surviving longer and it should be finding the food. So let's keep going. You can see that these numbers are both increasing positively. Now let me scroll down some more. Okay, after 90,000 actions, the snake is in the positive range. It's able to stay alive for a lot longer and the reward amount is in the positive. Let me go all the way down and see if training is done. Okay, training is done, model saved as snake model. And it's right here, snake model.zip. Let me go back to my documentation. Watch the train model. This command by default will look for snake model.zip. Use that model to play the game, or you can use the subsequent command if the snake model zip is uh, a different name. Okay, let's watch the AI play the game. Yep, that's the AI, that's not me. So we've trained for 100,000 steps and it's pretty good. Okay, I'm sure if we train some more, it's gonna get even uh, higher points. Okay, now let me point out what changes we have to make. Let me go to the um, snake environment first. This is our gymnasium compatible wrapper. Here we import the snake game. There are five functions that we need to implement and they're listed on the left side here. Init, reset, step, render, and close. These are the standard functions that we need to implement. In the init function, we're creating a instance of the game itself. We're defining the size of the action space and it is four. And then the size of the observation space Going back to the diagram, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The size of the observation space is 11. This function initializes the game the first time. The next function resets the game. And then the next function step, this is where we ask the game to take the action that is randomly generated. And that action is randomly generated by stable baselines three. Stable baselines three is going to call the step function and it's gonna generate a random action. So it doesn't happen in this file. When the game takes the action, it needs to return this standard set of parameters. Observation, we talked about before the reward, whether it's game over or not. If the game has a time limit, we use the truncated flag to indicate that time has ran out. And then info is just some additional information that you can pass back from the take action function, like debugging information. Def function returns all these things to stable baselines three. And then the render function, if render mode is set to human, this is gonna render the game to the screen. Actually, it's calling the game's render function. And then close is just to do cleanup. So the interface is relatively simple. The most important function is the step function, which calls the game's take action function. And let me jump here. Take action takes an action inside the game. So I'm not gonna talk about how the snake is gonna move. Let me point out what information needs to be collected and returned in this function. The reward, the reward is determined. If the snake hit a wall, then the game is over and reward is minus 10. Same thing here, if the snake hits itself, collides with its own tail, it's also game over, minus 10. Um, 
If it collects food, then the reward is 10. So code is added in this function to figure out how much the reward is after taking the action. And after taking the action, collecting the observation. Let me jump to the observation. The observation, all this code is what we talked about, figuring out the dangerous obstacles, what direction the snake was moving, and the food's relative location. All that collected into an array and return it. So the code matches up with figuring out the cumulative reward and figuring out what the observations are and return it to the agent. So that pretty much sums up what you need to modify in your game. In the train snake function, we're using stable baselines three. For simplicity, we're just using one of the algorithms that SB3 has. It has a lot more than just PPO, but we'll just use this for now. Here we import the gym environment. In the train snake function, we create an instance of the gym environment. This is our interface to the game itself. We create the PPO model or the neural network. For the most part, you don't need to worry about these parameters. You can just use the default and it should work. And then you just call the learn function and how many steps you want the agent to take. After it does the learning, we call the save function and that's where you get the .zip file. And that's about it. And the play function, it's about the same. It loads the .zip file and then runs the game. So we don't need to talk about that. As you can see, it's not even 30 lines to do the training. As long as you have converted your game to this pattern, Stable Baseline 3 takes care of the hard work. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope everything was clear. If not, drop me a question in the comments and also let me know what games you are trying to train.